hype over hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine has scientists trying to learn more to make sure it's safe and effective. The FDA gave emergency approval for the use of the two malaria drugs to treat severe cases of COVID-19, but the treatment strategy remained unproven. There has been a lot of attention on some of these drugs called hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine because they work um, in a test tube, essentially, to have some activity at inhibiting the growth of these viruses. Um, however, they've not been studied adequately in uh, people who've had this infection. And so there's a need for that. These drugs are being made available for the treatment of a disease, and yet we don't know if they actually do more good than harm. Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis has faculty members involved in a range of COVID-19 response research, including investigating anti-malarial drugs. Every single one of us involved with various aspects of the response to coronavirus, and some are involved with um, the actual direct patient care, some are involved with the basic science and looking at new vaccine and treatment options in the laboratory, others are involved with uh, doing the clinical trials for the agents that look promising or need to be investigated. In April, colleagues of Dr. Stephen Lawrence in the Division of Infectious Diseases launched a clinical trial involving both anti-malarial drugs. Fully controlled and what we call gold standard uh, study is needed to be able to confirm if there is um, both safety and efficacy. Then in May, the National Institutes of Health launched a clinical trial involving hydroxychloroquine. In the cases of both clinical trials, scientists are investigating combining the antimalarials with the antibiotic azithromycin. Azithromycin is used to treat many types of infections caused by bacteria, including respiratory, skin, ear, and eye infections. As an antibiotic, I would not have expected azithromycin to have any effect on a viral illness. Um, whether it does have an effect on a viral illness remains an open question. Um, and that is one of the reasons for conducting a study like this. Dr. Jeffrey Henderson is also part of the Division of Infectious Diseases. His role in the COVID-19 response is studying antibodies to the virus and coordinating a network for plasma donations. He understands every possible treatment needs investigation. With these particular agents, there's no firm a priori reason to believe that they would be active against for a viral infection. Uh, for this reason, I think it's important to have good clinical trial data uh, on their safety and on their efficacy for COVID-19. At Washington University, the goal is to determine if any of these medications, alone or in combination, decrease the severity or duration of respiratory symptoms. You would use either hydroxychloroquine alone or chloroquine alone, or you'd use hydroxychloroquine plus azithromycin, or chloroquine plus azithromycin. We have no idea if a combined approach is the best way to go about it. That's why the clinical trials need to be done and are being done. The drugs have known side effects, but researchers say patients involved are carefully screened, and such effects are not typically seen for short term.